Okay, hi everyone. Today we're working on graphs of quadratic functions. And you might be asking what's a quadratic function, um, but it really is just an x squared function. We call x squared functions quadratics, okay? X squareds are quadratics. Uh, in reference to that, like what do we call other equations? We, what we call something like if I say three x plus two, that's a line equation. And what happens is that we notice that what's in the ingredients makes our, our recipe, right? So if we only have one X, see how it's only one X, this will always be a line equation. If I see an X squared, like Y is equal to uh, X squared plus six X plus eight, right? You see the X squared, that's my highest exponent. This tells you what type of graph it's going to be. Now, how would you know this? You wouldn't naturally know this, but maybe if you've seen a lot of examples of X squared graphs, or X graphs, you realize that, hey, these are the types of graphs that they form. There's no other way to get this parabola for the most part, except it's gonna be X squared. And there's no other way you're gonna get an X squared to look at like a line, um, unless if it's just a regular X. So all X graphs give us lines and all X squared graphs give us pra uh, parabolas. And what does a parabola, well, that's the question you can go back, but what does a line look like? A line is y equals mx plus b, so m was the slope, this was my slope, and the y-intercept was our b. So we went one, two, and the slope was count one, two, three over one, three over one. This gave us a nice line. And if you wanna see like, why is that true? Well, we start off on two, we start off on two, and every step I take, every move you make, I go up by three. So I take one step over, I go up three. I take <clears throat> another step over, I still go up three. I take another step over, I go up three. And you end up with this pattern of growing by three. You could think of this as, as money. Y is equal to two X or three X plus two. Imagine if I said, I'll pay you $20 initially. And every hour you work, I'll give you 30 more. So you show up, I give you 20 bucks. You work one hour, I give you 30. You work two hours, I give you 60. You work three hours, I give you 90. Well, it's growing at a rate of, in this case, 30 for us, 30, 30, 30 for every step I take. But it's growing at a consistent, constant rate. And that's the thing about lines. They're very predictable, very consistent. You work one hour, I pay you one hour. You work for two hours, I pay you two hours. But x squared is going to change that dynamic because when I square something, it makes things grow faster. Now let's look at a pattern for x squared. Let's say y is equal to x squared. And this is a basic one. We're not playing with it, trying to make it faster or slower. Let's just look at a table. What happens when I fill out a table with x's and y's? This is a t table for us. And we're going to plug in some numbers for this t table. We're going to start right in the middle here, give myself some space. Zero, one, two, and three. These are the three numbers that we're going to plug in. And if x is zero, that's zero squared. If x is one, that's one squared. If x is two, that's two squared. If x is three, that's three squared. Now let's see if it's going to be predictable at all. Zero squared, zero times zero is zero. Okay. One times one is one. Great. You moved up one step. I'm glad for your promotion. But the next step, two squared is four. You jump this time, one to four, you jump three steps. Hey, that's not being consistent. And then I take another step, that becomes nine. Wait, from four to nine, three squared is nine. So I went up five steps. That's really inconsistent. And you might be saying, Mr. Go, hey, look, you're increasing by two every single time. But if I take my next step, let's do four, that's going to be um, four squared is 16. Well, that step over is seven. Oh, will this continue? Well, it seems like there's a, a slight pattern here, but my point is that it is not the same growth. It's not like I'm taking one step over uh, three steps up, like here, three steps up or 30, 30, 30. Every time I move over, I'm making an extra $30. Here, the steps are constantly changing. And you end up with this fast increase in the pattern. Let's go ahead and draw that now. As x equals zero, y is equal zero. When x is one, y is one. When x is two, y is 
4 when x is 3, 9. Do you think I want to draw 9? That's way out there. So I'm going to draw. It turns out you might think it looks like a line, but it's actually a curve. Because by the time I want you to get the line, 9. Now, I want to show you guys that this isn't a straight line. It might look like a straight line to you. Do all these three points look like a straight line? Let me take out my ruler and let's see. I'm going to connect the dots for two points. It looked like a straight line, but in actuality, while it, once I hit the zero and I hit one, I'm not going to hit three. You can see that it's way up here. It's way off target now. But what if I pick the other two? Let's pick these two points here. Do they connect with zero? Nope. So what happens is we end up with this graph that starts slow and then ramps up really quickly and goes to the moon. What does the left side look like? Will this continue downward in this cycle? Well, let's go ahead and plug in some numbers. Let's plug in the left side is negative one, negative two, and negative three. Okay, let's plug in these numbers and see what happens. Negative one, negative two, and negative three. Sorry, I kind of have to squeeze those in there. But negative one squared, what's negative times negative? Doesn't say negative, it turns out it's gonna be positive, one. Negative two squared, that's positive four. And negative three squared, that's positive nine. And I want you to notice that these numbers are repeating on the left side and the right side. Numbers on the left look like numbers on the right. And this parabola gives us a special U shape. Okay, this parabola gives us a special U shape. Okay, so as you can see, this is not a line shape. This here is a U shape, and this is what we call parabolas. Every type of X squared problem will always result in this shape of this U, and we call this a parabola. So whenever you see an X squared problem, you're gonna to expect to see not a line, but this parabola shape. Okay, this parabola shape. Now, let's go back and let's actually look at X squared plus six X plus eight. Okay, um, so we're gonna go ahead and draw this parabola. We're gonna draw this parabola. I'm gonna draw it out for you, but I'm gonna actually use a couple of things that um, that we've actually been working on already. So what we did is in this task that we worked on before, we actually solved for zero. So let's actually do that again. I'm given a graph, we can solve for zero. Let's go ahead and solve for zero and that'll give us some interesting points. To graph parabolas, it's a whole lesson. It's a whole bunch of steps that we're gonna work on to graph these parabolas. There is not just one way, there's several different ways. There, there are smart ways and there are slow ways, okay? But let's go ahead and, and do something that we've learned before. So these parabolas are uh, factorable in this case. This one is factorable. Two numbers that multiply to become eight, one, eight, two, and four. Of these two options, which of these add up, add up to six? One, eight, or two, four? Hopefully you see that it's two, four. I try to teach factoring like this because level one problems are can be super easy. And you can, of course, it's like a brain puzzle. What would this mean for zero? Uh, X would be negative two and negative four. Now, going back to graphing, we said that we want to solve for zero. So this means that my Y value is zero, okay? My Y value is zero. So we end up with two points for sure I know are zero. We are for sure that negative two becomes zero and negative four becomes zero. And these are what we call our x-intercepts. Why we call them x-intercept? If you remember back in first semester, the idea of an x-intercept or a y-intercept is when does a graph touch these lines, these axes, the x's and the y's? Well, when you are on the floor, your y value is equal to zero, right? This is what it means when you're on the floor. Your Y is just sitting on the floor. You're not on the first floor. You're not on the second floor. You're at the zero floor, I guess. 
So we have answers at negative one, two, three, four, negative two, and negative four. And what we do is we're going to put a dot at negative two and negative four. And we said this is a problem. This is a U shape. Now, can you think of a line? Is, is this a line? Nope. You can say, oh, Mr. Ko, hey, well, if I draw a line between these two, can I just draw a line like this? Wouldn't this line go through both of those points? But here's something weird. Remember, we only came up with two answers that will make the graph go to zero. So none of these other answers here are actually allowed. We're only allowed two answers at zero. Those are our only two answers. So how would this have to look? This would actually have to look like a problem. And this is what the graph would look like. It looks like a U graph. It's almost like I took a straight line and I bent it into a curving line. Okay. Now, we want to talk about some characteristics. And this is really what your homework is going to be about, labeling these characteristics. We have right here, x-intercepts. Where does the graph run into 0, run into the floor at x equals to negative 2 and negative 4? And we are able to get that from actually doing the algebraic work here by factoring. Okay, I'm gonna tell you, we have a new point here. What do you call the bottom of a parabola? Okay, there's a special term, we call that the vertex. And the vertex is a point. This is a point, okay? This is a point. The vertex is what's the point? It's gonna be for us, negative three comma negative one. So when you're asked for what's the vertex of your parabola, it could be the most bottom or it could be the most top of a parabola. This is also considered the vertex, okay, vertex. So we learn two keywords, two characteristics. Like Mr. Ko is a tall Asian guy with glasses, okay? So what are the characteristics of this parabola? It looks like a U. So far we know it, it runs into the X axis at not only negative two, but also negative four two times and then has a special point called the vertex right in the middle. It's called the vertex. That's where the point where they kind of meet together. We also have another uh, word, and it's called the line of symmetry, okay? the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is where does the graph left side look like the right? At what point does the graph left side look like the right? And if you look at it right here, would you agree that the left side mirrors the right? It's like a mirror reflection. And that's what we call the axis of symmetry. And there's two M's in symmetry. Okay, axis of symmetry. And this is a X value for us because the axis is the left side looks like the right side. And in this case, X equals to negative three. So that's another keyword we need to tell people. Hey, at negative three, this graph looks, the left side looks like the right side. Oops, that's not a good way of doing it. The left side looks like the right side. Right? The left side looks like the right side there. Move this a little over. The left side looks like the right side. That's the axis of symmetry. Okay, that's your axis of symmetry. So we talked about three things. This graph runs into the ground at negative four and negative two. This graph has a vertex, a point where everything kind of meets up. That's at negative three and negative one. In geometry, when you draw a square or any corner, these are also called a vertex, but since they're plural, we call them vertices. Vertices for uh, plural, okay? We have four of these vertices, okay, same word. And then um, we have one more. And we're looking for, if we have the x-intercept, we're looking for the y-intercept, just so we know, we know it. The y-intercept, remember how this graph keeps on going forever? Well, eventually it's gonna hit the x-axis. Sorry, the, sorry, the y-axis, I don't wanna mess up my little words. This is the y-axis, okay? So what is the y-intercept? So what's the y-intercept here? And there's actually an algebraic way of doing it. Well, you could, continue to draw the graph up and try to find it. 
But here's the easy way. If we're looking for y, make x equal to zero, because this is x equals to zero. And we're trying to figure out at what point when x equals to zero, are we going to actually hit that graph? So y is equal to zero squared plus six times zero plus eight. We're just plugging in zero to the problem. And hopefully you realize zero times anything is still zero. So it's zero plus zero plus eight. And here's a hint. It's always just the last number. That's just eight. So the y-intercept is eight. The y intercept is eight. Okay. And that's where the graph actually hits the y axis. Okay. We have one more word, and the word refers to max, maximum, or minimum. Now, these parabolas only have one or the other. Either they have a maximum or minimum. If you look on my left, see how we peek out? It's like a firework, right? So we have a max here. But if we dip, we have a min. Now, why don't we have a max? Is because look at this arrow here. They go off to infinity. They just keep on going forever. They never stop. So we don't have maximum because they keep on going forever. But we sure do have a minimum. And the minimum and maximum is a y value. It's a y value. So what is the minimum here? Hopefully you notice that that's looking like negative one. So our y is equal to negative one. Our minimum maximum is what is the height of it? Now, where is the minimum located? Where is the maximum located? All right, these are our four characteristics. Uh, actually like, like five now, but we have the vertex, the x-intercept, y-intercept, the axis of symmetry, and then the maximum or minimum. Okay, these are the main words that we're going to be looking at. You'll be tested on these. Okay? And they're just simple vocabulary words that we can use to describe this new type of shape that we have. Okay, let's do this one more time with a different shape. Y is equal to negative, oh, sorry, x squared minus uh, 3x, not, not minus 3x, minus uh, 2x um, minus, let's do minus uh, 4, okay? Let's do something like this. Oh, wait, oh, not, not four. That doesn't work. Uh, let's do eight, because four times two is eight. Four times two is eight, yes. Okay. So this is our problem. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and graph it for you. Okay. If if you're not sure how to graph it, um, we can do some characteristics. Let's go ahead and do, actually do some easy ones. How can I, let's look for our, let's look for our x-intercept first. Because we, we practiced that skill before. x squared minus 2x minus 8, that's making this equal to 0. Let's see, when will you hit the ground? When will you hit the x-axis? Can you think of two numbers that multiply to become 8 that subtract out to be 2? 4 times 2, 1 times 8. 4 times 2 does work. We end up with x x, four, and two. Let's see, can you tell me which one's gonna be negative, the four or the two? When you're factoring here, which one would be negative, the four or the two? Hopefully you agree with me, it's going to be the four because we have more negatives, right? More negatives. And then our zeros would be x's positive four and negative two. Now these level one problems, you should be able to finish in like 30 seconds. If you guys have been doing the IXL uh, and you practice this a lot, you should be able to do these easy ones. I'm not saying the hard ones, okay, please. Hard ones, so of course, you need more time, and we sometimes we get lucky, sometimes we don't. But for these easy ones, you should take like 30 seconds to do them. It's as fast as your pen can write. Now, what does this mean on the graph on the right? That means, I mean, I have one, two, three, four. We have a y intercept, sorry, an x intercept right here. That's going to be a four. And then another x intercept that negative one, two. All right, great. Now, since I know these two points, negative four and negative two, where do you think the middle is? What's the middle value between four and negative two? Now to find the middle of something, there's actually an easy trick. It's just the same as finding the average. We add them and divide by two. Four plus negative two and divide by two. Well, so what's half of it? Four plus
plus negative two is two, two divided by two is one. And would you guys be okay that one here is the middle of the graph? Does one look like the middle of the graph? One is the same number of spaces to the left as it to the right. It's one, two, three spaces, one, two, three. And the problem is very balanced like that. The left side and the right side are supposed to mimic each other. It's a mirror reflection. So this is what we call the axis of symmetry. And what does the axis of symmetry look like? That looks like X is equal to one. That's where I'm gonna put the mirror where the left side of the graph looks like the right side of the graph. Well, for this graph, um, three steps over, three squared is nine. So this should actually be nine steps down. So this is gonna be negative one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, okay? So that's just something from my experience. I'm able to tell you that that's negative nine without actually doing any math to it. Now, the way I did it is actually I kind of cheated. I said, looking back at our table here, if I'm one step over, I'm going to be one step up. If I'm two steps over, I'm going to be four steps up. If I'm three steps over, I'm going to be nine steps up. So I knew because of me just doing this a lot, that since I'm three steps over, one, two, three, I'm going to, I know I need to be nine steps down because it takes me nine steps to get up here. So this problem here, that is our U shape. And I wonder if you can see that. This is a mirror reflection, right? Well, at least the best of my, as I can draw a freehand, right? Okay, so this is our axis of symmetry. Now, since I drew that negative nine, so what do you think the two questions, what do you, what's the minimum of the graph? Okay, what's the minimum? What's the lowest value we have in this graph? And then that leads me to say, what is the vertex of the graph? And these answers are different, though they seem like they're the same, but they're different. The minimum is the what's the lowest value? What's the lowest y value? And hopefully you see the lowest y value here is going to be negative 9. And the vertex is not just negative 9, but it's also where does that negative 9 happen for us? At 1, 1, negative 9. We also have one more question. What is, so we found the x-intercepts. We did not find the y-intercepts. Let's see if we can find the y-intercept. What's the y-intercept? And that's when we plug in x is zero. And it, maybe we can see it. If I'm looking at my graph here, if x is zero, if you go down here, you'll see that, hey, it ran into the graph, didn't it? And if my lowest is nine, it looks like it's one step up, up above it. And that looks like negative eight. And it actually is negative eight. If I, let's look, let's try this for some of you guys who are really fast here. If I plug in zero and zero, what's the only number left? If I plug in zero and zero, what's the only number left? Negative eight, yep. That's also our uh, y-axis, okay? So let's actually show the math out. If I said zero squared minus two times zero minus eight, this is zero minus zero minus eight, which is negative eight. And that's our y intercept. Y is equal to negative eight. When x is zero, what is your y value? Okay. All right. So today, that's your IXL. Uh, you're going to be uh, given graphs. They're going to do all the graphing for you, and you're just going to label. You're going to answer what they're asking. What's the x-intercept? What's the y-intercept? What's the minimum? What's the maximum? Uh, if there's a maximum, what is the vertex? And then what's the axis of symmetry? And each of these have to be written in a specific way. The vertex is the x and y point. The minimum is just the y value. What's the lowest you can be? The axis of symmetry is at what x value do we start to reflect? And that's an x value in this case. And the x-intercept is an x value because I want to figure out what the x's are when you run into the ground. And the y-intercept is a y value because I want to figure out at what value do you hit the, the y-axis, okay? So that's why it might be a little confusing. Um, which way do we answer that question? All right. So please practice that and that's it.